How quickly do we forget about something that's not happening in our neighborhood? How fast do we lose sight of things which are no longer present in the media? Catastrophes only get public attention while they're actually happening. Diseases with a global dimension are only considered if they affect industrialized countries. Malaria has been a global threat for 4,000 years. Although the illness has been eradicated in Europe, America and Australia to the greatest possible extent, more people than ever before are living with the risk of malaria today. The disease is endemic in 106 countries and affects half of the world's population. Malaria kills almost 800,000 people every year, 91% of them in sub-Saharan Africa. It all starts with a mosquito bite at night. Untreated malaria causes death primarily among children. 85% of all malaria deaths are children under five. They are endangered when they sleep without a mosquito net at night, but also while playing outside until late in the evening at waters, in the grass and on the streets, in the rain and between rubbish heaps. Open sewers, stagnant waters and garbage around houses serve as perfect breeding grounds for the Anopheles mosquito. In many regions of Africa, it looks much like it does here in Kasumu at Lake Victoria. The risk of malaria infection could be drastically reduced through clearance of breeding sites and comprehensive use of insecticide-treated mosquito nets. But in most cases, the financial resources and extensive sensitization of the local population needed to implement these measures are missing. Malaria is not only preventable, it's also treatable. To avoid incorrect medical treatment and prevent resistance to currently effective medicines, it is essential to detect the agent through a blood test. Once malaria is diagnosed, the patient gets the respective malaria medicines. In Kenya, these are, at least theoretically, provided by the government and distributed to patients free of charge. Many countries, such as Kenya, do not have the financial means to strengthen their weak public health systems and provide medicines for all people in need. Therefore, patients often have to face traveling long distances to the nearest health center. Since malaria kills fast, this factor is not to be underestimated. Moreover, many people simply do not have the money for medical consultations, blood tests and medicines. Additionally, affected countries suffer huge economic consequences due to the loss of productivity resulting from the disease. Malaria is a poverty-related illness and consequently remains one of the main burdens of the African continent. Despite these alarming facts, some African countries have been able to halve malaria-related deaths through the implementation of selective measures. But not only governmental efforts count in the fight against malaria, every individual can make a contribution. Western Kenya is one of the regions of the country most affected by malaria. There, there are also people who display outstanding engagement and take action where the government has failed so far. The farmer, Leonard Mia, is one of them. Together with her husband, Manoa, she cultivates sweet wormwood, which has been used to treat fever in traditional Chinese medicine for centuries. Today, the active ingredient extracted from this plant is one component of the so-called artemisinin combination therapies, 
which are currently the most effective medicines for treatment of uncomplicated malaria. So far, Artemisia anua has mainly been cultivated in Asia. This led to a monopoly that made the raw materials and thereby the production of the medicines extremely expensive. Treating malaria has become very expensive and um, we have had resistant strains. But since the introduction of uh, artemisinin based uh, drugs, it's been very expensive. That in the chemists, the convention uh, uh, dispensing uh, mechanisms actually, a dose would sell for up to about 600 shillings. But uh, the use of the natural one here is uh, a bit lower because a full dose will go for just about 140. That is uh, 20 shillings a day. And if you take it for seven days, just, just about a, a 140 shillings. And apart from that, it's accessible. As a natural uh, remedy, we advocate the use of uh, natural remedies as a complementary uh, a, a, a agent. And Artemisia is liked by community members. Biogarden Innovations is a small local initiative based in Bunyore, which advocates the use of natural medicines and promotes income-generating activities for peasants. With the help of this organization, Linit Mia has learned how to cultivate, process and sell Artemisia anua. So we have trained farmers and there are farmers who have started propagating Artemisia and uh, other, other neighbors usually come and buy uh, the Artemisia that is packed in uh, small sachets and the sachets actually sell for 20, between 20 to 30 shillings. Uh, some of the uh, sachets actually we usually bring at our small grocery and uh, sell it widely uh, to other farmers and other community members. In this way the initiative kills two mosquitoes with one stone. On the one hand, this natural medicine is locally available and dependence on expensive raw material imports is reduced. On the other hand, it serves farmers as a source of income. Together, at the same time, each and every one of them is contributing in the fight against the number one killer in the country. <laughs> Population Services International, PSI, is an international organization based in the US. It also promotes individual engagement for the common welfare. The organization campaigns for public awareness on malaria and its prevention to the greatest possible extent. Here, a small team explains the proper use of mosquito nets at a gathering of the village community. <laughs> The organization assists local drama groups that do health education in the communities. Because education can also work differently. A big crowd can be reached in the bustle of the city, on the streets, when suddenly a special situation develops. Malaria as a drama. Doing away with prejudices, misunderstandings and misbeliefs in a playful manner. I discovered that malaria was a burden in our community. Therefore, since I was, I was talented to, to do the drama, I decided to join the group, this Pamoja Youth Group, and I, I get them doing the, the, the education. People are losing, are, are, are losing lives of small children and even, even adults because of the malaria. 
Now, we saw that. We see that it is good for us to educate them to use nets well. Net utilization is a cornerstone of malaria prevention. Insecticide treated nets have been proven to be especially effective. Figures show proper use of these nets can reduce malaria transmission by 90% and the mortality rate by 20%. According to the World Health Organization, 42% of all households in Africa own one mosquito net. Organizations like Population Services International contribute to their increase so that there can be a long-term reduction in malaria cases. In order to reach that goal, it's critical that effective malaria medicines and diagnostic tests are available and affordable for all people in need. The population is often inadequately supplied, especially in rural areas. The American Health Store Foundation has taken up the challenge of improving healthcare in these areas. In Kenya, the organization currently runs 82 child and family wellness clinics, or CFW clinics for short. The clinics work according to a franchise system. This way, the population benefits in terms of better healthcare, and the franchise owners of the pharmacies and clinics have a stable source of income. Janet Kamar runs one of these clinics. She's a qualified nurse who became self-employed with this franchise business, and she knows about the advantages of the project for people in the region. The nets we get are usually brought to us after they have been sourced by Sustainable Healthcare Foundation. And they get them from PSI. They bring to us at a cost of 40 shillings, and we sell them at 50 shillings. And actually, the community are uh, happy about the price because they cannot get uh, that net in any, other, in any other place other than the CFW shops. The benefit for the community is they are able to access the services which they can be able to afford. So that whatever services we are providing, they are affordable. The difference is that uh, we have a, a flow of supply. The, the sustainable health care is able to source for us the drugs in time. Then we make a requisition and they bring to us at the time we require. That's why they are accessible and available for the community. Janet Kamar has five employees in her clinic. They frequently visit other nearby communities. There they collect information about the health status of the people and explain the proper use of mosquito nets. During these household visits, Janet and her colleagues sometimes cover distances of up to 20 kilometers a day. They always bring along a few mosquito nets in case any families are in need of them. Today, Janet is visiting the Muzungu family. Auma Muzungu has suffered from malaria several times already. Thanks to effective medicines, the illness could be cured. She uses preventive measures to protect herself and her family from new infections. Mosquito nets play the most important role in the process. <laughs> nikutabika tu alafu nikienda kwa hospitali wananipeanga dawa ya malaria nikimeza nasikia nafu na hiyo tu machache sasa hiyo neti vile nilienda center ni vile nilikuwa mgonjwa nikanunua hiyo neti kwa maana walisema wenye uko mimba alafu na watoto lakini sasa mimi nilikuwa mtu mzima hawezi kunipea net free paka lazima ninunue alafu nikanunue net nikakoja nayo lakini saa hii 
Suonengi marere kama inakuja na hapo na hapo kwa jile niko na neti. Lakini neti enyo inesaya seeka. Alafu mnaza kunisaidi yako na nini. Janet Kamar makes these household visits on a voluntary basis because she knows that they're important for customer care as well as efficient malaria prevention and treatment. And the reason why I come to the homes is actually to be able to know whether my clients and patients are able to use the drugs that they have been given, especially relating to malaria. It also help us, helps us to, when we come to the home to assess the environmental sanitation, to know whether they are able to practice the preventive aspect of malaria. And also when we have given them the, the nets, like some patients we give nets or we, they buy net, the nets, we want to ensure that they are using those nets in their homes. She sees it as her mission to care for the health of her fellow citizens. That is her contribution to the fight against malaria. Uh, I've not lost a patient since I started treating patients with malaria. Really, I, because I'm a trained community health nurse, uh, that was a very good area that I enjoy going to visit people in their homes, and that gives me actually satisfaction of my job. <laughs> Financially, maybe sometimes it is not possible because when you go to a home, a patient cannot afford a home-based care treatment. So you just provide a service a free of a free free of charge. Uh, emotionally, I think I'm okay. That helps me also to be able to be satisfied that I have seen my patient uh, in the right way. But CFW staff members do not only visit households. Schools are an especially important place when it comes to promoting awareness. Children are the most prone to malaria as they are not always able to protect themselves from infection. They do not know much, if anything, about the disease and they have weaker immune systems. Every 45 seconds, a child dies from malaria in Africa. In Kenya alone, 20% of all children do not live to see their fifth birthday due to a malaria infection. And even if a child survives a severe case of malaria, they commonly suffer from long-term consequences such as disruptions of growth, slow mental development, and learning disabilities. Like here at the Moody Awari Primary School in Funyala, many Kenyan schools have so-called health clubs. Students can become members on a voluntary basis and educate their fellow students about various health issues. Needless to say, malaria is a topic here as well. Children are very adaptive, curious and attentive. This results in the fact that they often pass their new knowledge about the disease on to their parents. The education of children possibly offers the greatest potential in the fight against malaria. In this year I've been sick for malaria twice. I was, I was just sitting and then in, we had not yet slashed the grass. And then suddenly where we, I had sat, I always bath there in the, in the evening. And there is stagnant water there now. Mosquitoes were breeding there. They were buzzing. Now suddenly I had a mosquito bite on my leg. The school health club members were presenting and I saw that it is good for me to enter because they are getting education about various diseases like HIV, AIDS and malaria. So I entered in because I wanted to get information to go and tell my parents ways of, of prevention of malaria. So that's why I entered in the Afia Club. Now I'm able to control malaria by slashing and all that.